books. Um, hmm. Okay. Hello? Is there still the yep. beep? No, it's fine. Yes. Great. Okay. After some tech difficulties, we are finally <laughs> live. Oh, yeah. hello, people. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hi. I'm Cass, a pain and movement therapist, and this is Singyun. Hi, I'm uh, Singyun. I'm a voice teacher and performer. Yeah. So we got some questions not that many questions but feel free to pop in your questions through the question box thing on ig live if you have any and we will be asking the question uh, we ask, we'll be answering the questions from the story that Jingyun put up first mm -hmm. okay so Jingyun, what was the first question can you pull it up let me just type the little thing for people physical training pain etc Ah, uh, to pin, yes. Yeah. Okay, how does one pin this? Pin. Okay. Here we go. The first question that was asked was this. Can you see it? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, which body awareness exercises are helpful to singers habituated in lifting their necks? Uh, the person also messaged in to um, give more specifics mm -hmm. like straining the neck forward and up uh, saying that it's a long-term problem and got better with certain exercises like uh, lying with the book behind the head mm -hmm. am i right yeah. and uh vocalizing with the uh, back to the wall mm -hmm. so those just give more uh, feedback to the back of the body uh, which allows a person to understand the relationship between their head their neck the upper back and the rest of the spine Mm. Um, okay, so body awareness exercise that are helpful, uh, habituated and lifting neck. So why you have to ask yourself, why are you lifting your neck in the first place? Like, why is that even a habit? Uh, usually when things happen, yes, it could just be out of habit. Like maybe you watch someone do it and you're like, ah, I'm also just going to start doing <laughs> that. Uh, so it could, it could be that. It could just be mm. mirroring who you learned from when you were trying to mm. learn how to make the sound. Uh, it also could be from a place of trying to draw more resources to make the sound that you're trying to make. So, mm. for example, if you're trying to make a sound that's particularly loud or high in pitch, just something that's out of your what you perceive as your comfort zone. So not, yeah, it might not be your actual comfort zone. Mm. It might be what you perceive as what is comfortable for mm. you. You may want to try to strain or do something in order to push the sound out. So mm. that could be lifting your neck, thinking that ah, in order to reach a pitch that's higher than what I'm comfortable with, I'm going to reach for that mm. pitch literally um so what you can do is try to work on for more long-term things um you you want to try to work on being more comfortable in reaching that pitch in other positions so yes it mm. can be you know you can vocalize with the book uh in the back of your head and lying down and things like that but Moving forward, you, you can't just, you, you can't be on stage <laughs> with a <the> book <laughs> on the floor and lying down and on, or against the wall. Like, okay, I need a wall. And then now I'm going to vocalize this note. No, you can't do that. So, so you need to try and, um, one, maybe try and be more resourced in uh, maybe your pelvic floor. Maybe do some um, exercises to improve the strength of your core that doesn't mean that you do a lot of crunches it can it can mean that um you know, you can do some planks uh just to find a connection or uh, awareness or strength in your core but me mainly your torso okay mm -hmm. so like your belly and back area okay i don't really like the word core because people think people have preconceived notions of what core means so just your belly area and your back area you need mm. um you, so uh in our video in our first video there was the beast crawl hold you can try and do that and 
try and vocalize after that position or vocalize in the position to mm. understand the position of your head, your torso or chest region and your lower back and your pelvis in this in a in an active position as opposed to just uh, being passive like lying on the floor with your head against a book or just being just leaning against the wall. Another thing is to just do that exercise um, maybe three times a week. You can hold it for 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, repeat that two to three times depending on your tolerance for that position and right now, like what, how long you can hold it for. And then try and improve that. So maybe this week, because you've never done the, the movement before, you can just do it twice a week to try and strengthen all of um, the muscles and tissues regarding that position. And then uh, the next week, you can do it maybe twice a week, but instead of repeating it twice on two days, you repeat it thrice on two mm. days, and then so on and so forth. Like maybe you start to add one more day, and then you do uh, two sets of that exercise in those three days um, so that you start to strengthen that position. So that would be something more long term, would be to just strengthen your body so that you can use other parts of your body to support more uncomfortable uh, notes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or sounds. First, yeah. Kes mentioned like we have to understand like where is this habit coming from? What is your body trying to help you do? Because your body is trying to help you to create the sound that you're trying to do. Usually something that's higher in pitch or more high intensity, meaning um, louder or more strident sound. So then it's about redistributing where you're putting your effort and then finding a more efficient way of being, being able to support that sound. Um, and an example of it would be the Beast Crawl Hold, which um, you can watch in either of our links in our bios. We've linked our first Move Your Voice video. You can watch how to do it there. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, there's a video just just for the Beast Crawl Hold as well because we, mm -hmm. we made a clip. So if you don't want to watch the whole video, which is 13 minutes long, you can just watch the Beast Crawl Hold <laughs> Uh, video which is on Singin's YouTube channel, which okay. you can find in her bio, yeah, Yay. and my bio as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, anything else that you need that you want to say about this? Mm, I guess in terms of how I see the students I've worked with and myself as well, how this is applied. When there's a general sense of okay, I can use other parts of my body to support this sound, then this kind of moves away. Yet Goes there are away. Yeah that yeah. you would need to engage like here and here to create so if you're doing more like metal and rock singing or more distortion you do need to anchor here so i think it's important to remember what you're trying to do and how you're trying to do it and if it's serving your goal um yeah mm. yeah yeah and and i think the very first thing we should have said is there's nothing particularly wrong with lifting your neck mm -hmm. it's just when are you doing it and are you doing mm -hmm. it all the time and is it is it uh hindering your your goal or the sound that you want to make mm -hmm. yeah and also is it bringing you pain and <laughs> discomfort in your daily life <laughs> and while you sing okay mm -hmm. so shall we move on to the next question yeah let's go to the hello everybody hello those who and joined yeah uh, okay, so from your expertise, what can schools do to improve the level of speaking in this country? Do you want to go first? Okay, so this, I'm just going to say it, this question not particularly <laughs> like our expertise and <laughs> not exactly in theme, but we're, we'll, just, we'll just answer it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Sing in, do you have anything to say? You can go I first. I think when Kes and I were reviewing the questions we had, and, and we were like, mm, how should we approach this? Because like she said, it's not our expertise. And I guess we wanted to find out from this person, if you are here, um, whether or not you mean like pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, accents, the way that we phrase things. Like what do you mean by mm. um, level of speaking, right? But yeah, from my yeah. perspective, I'm going to answer it from a voice coach perspective and whatever I know about anthropology and like social linguistic stuff. My first concern about this would be, are we talking about um, Singlish versus Standard English? Because if you're talking about Standard English, then in schools, whatever is being taught um, that I remember and from what my students tell me is your regular oral stuff, right? And from what I recall, there's not a lot of emphasis on how to pronounce things. It's more so just let's read together as a class. 
there's not a lot of focused um, coaching to people who have different needs. So in a voice lesson, for example, a teacher would work with you, whether it's for speaking or singing, on how you would pronounce things. They would pick up on your vocal habits. For example, um, for a lot of Singaporean speakers who are more like familiar with Singlish, the vocal posture would be that the tongue is kind of retracted backwards. And then there's a little bit of inactivity in the lips, I would say. Also, there's a smaller mouth posture as well. So then it's about how do we then find a new way of speaking that feels familiar, but still um, allows, allows us to be clear with what we're speaking. And this is something that I don't really see in English lessons, uh, where usually speaking would be taught in a larger school setting. However, if, for example, you are in a drama school or if you're in a drama class, you would then have a lot more of a focused coaching um, approach from your teachers. So then it would be quite different. And I think the other thing is also to understand that just because someone is taught how to speak correctly or better with more clarity doesn't mean that it's something that they themselves might want to do. And I think being a voice coach, a lot of the processes that I go through with people is understanding what do you want to be able to do with your voice? Is it to speak clearly, to speak with more depth, a different pitch? Do you want to be able to slow down your pitch? Do you want to have more presence in the way that you speak? And this differs from person to person. So depending on your vocal needs, then also the vocal habits you would want to learn and be able to access will be quite different. So for example, code switching is very important for us Singaporeans and even people who like work with international persons for professional and personal needs, right? And code switching is basically learning how to not only socially change how you would build rapport, but also changing your vocal posture such that you would fit into the social context at the present. So we can think of it in the sense of acquiring different vocal abilities rather than just improving your level of speaking. Um, so I think that's all I can afford to say <laughs> that's within my realm of expertise and experience. Yeah, what about you? Yeah. That's an awesome uh, answer. It's just, <laughs> I mean, all I can do is really just break down the question. It's just like, what can schools do? Well, like, what kind of schools? Public schools? Or like, there are so many different types of schools in Singapore. And then improve, improve from what? And what are we improving to? Mm-hmm. And level of speaking, okay, um, what, in, in what? Like our mother tongue, you know, because we have mother tongue in public schools. Or like, is it the third language that we're learning? Is it English? <laughs> what, yeah. um, like, what, what are we speaking here? And then, of course, yeah, the main things like pronunciation. Is it pronunciation? Is it grammar? Is it use and choice of words? Is it sentence structure? Is it mm. tones and inflections? Is it how we express ourselves? Like, what mm. level of speaking? And then in this whole country, like, what, like, are we about to put a bunch of amas in <laughs> in speaking school? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and what are we going to teach those amas? Like, hey, you're not speaking Hokkien well enough. You better like brush up your Hokkien speaking skills. Like, <laughs> or, 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 or whatever other language it is that we wish for them to learn. Mm. So I mean, it's just a very general question. And I think that's all I can really do is just break down this question. Because mm. <laughs> I personally don't have enough uh, expertise on this. I, can, I just have opinions. Mm. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm not going to speak on that other yeah. than breaking down this question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess to like directly answer the question based on our limited um, scope mm. of discussion, I guess what schools can do is if, for example, they are working with a larger group of students on how to approach oral tests, they can provide personalized feedback for the students. Of course, this depends on the teacher's resources and time and other things they have to do as a teacher. So it's very exactly. Like, yeah, just do that. But I don't know if it's practical. And I guess thinking about it, I don't think we did a lot of presentations in primary school. And a large part of like learning how to socialize through speech is being able to put it into practice. Socializing mm. with your friends versus speaking in a more formal setting is very different. And if we don't have the setting to practice in, it's very difficult for our body and our mind to connect and be like, yo, this is what we want to do more frequently. Um, mm. so yeah, I, oh, yeah, me, yeah, exactly. I, yeah, that, I, I can probably only speak to, to that, which is that you get better at doing something when you do it 
more in the specific setting that you want to do it. So because of the the principle, which is a specific adaptation is to impose demands, <laughs> uh, which means that your body adapts to exactly what you tell it to do. Uh, mm. For example, if I want to re- get really good at handstands, I do more handstands. <laughs> uh, if I want to get good at, at uh, lying down, I lie down more. Um, there's no like... Like just just lean against the wall and eventually I'll lie down better. Like no, not really. <laughs> so you have to do the specific activity in order to get better at it. And yeah, I guess speaking is probably the same. Uh, mm. So yes, probably you need to speak more in very specific, uh, I guess um, scenarios that you want to speak better in and mm. where you can get feedback from whoever it is, like your mm. teacher in this case because school. Yeah. Yeah. About your speaking. Yep. Yeah, you just have a lot to yeah. do already. <sighs> yeah, and then you, then like, what does it mean to improve? Also, you know, that's also another thing that we'll need to settle. Mm-hmm. You, know? <laughs> settle. you and me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, settle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, okay. Since we have uh, no more questions from the audience, unless you all wanna put in some questions right now, and if you don't, that's okay because we have other things to talk about. <laughs> Uh, which is stuff from the last Q and A. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it after after this. Uh, or if you are watching a playback, go watch that one first, then watch this one. Uh, we're well, going to um, talk more about. If you want to watch it hmm? at two times speed, you can watch it on our YouTube instead, because Tess and I like to watch it faster. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Even yeah. Just even I think I want to speak slowly. Anyway, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, the question was about body aches and how it affects singing specifically. And we went, we went through really briefly about what you can do if you do need to sing and you have body aches. I didn't go into more detail. So uh, what does it mean to have body aches or tightness is the f- first thing that you need to assess uh, in that question. And our body is made up of a lot of systems and one of the system is your nervous system and it helps with protecting you from potential harm so it's not just uh like when something is happening already then it's time to switch on all the protections is when your your body thinks something is going to happen i will switch all of these things on Mm. it doesn't make sense for a security system to only switch on when the robber is already <laughs> stealing your stuff and leaving. So yeah, so that's why um, our nervous systems do that. So one of the ways it helps to protect you is through tightness and aches and pains. So it's almost like a way to tell you like, okay, we're a little bit, uh, f- I guess, less resourced in this position or these movements. Can we please not move in these positions? In terms of body aches after exercise, we don't particularly know a lot or everything about why we get body aches after training or a new activity. All that we know is that uh, it happens and it happens when we do new stuff mainly. Mm. So new can be you do more than usual or it's just a completely foreign movement to you. Mm. We don't know why <laughs> this, what the, the aches do yet. So, but the main thing is aches and pains and tightness help to protect you from potential harm. So what you can do is try to reduce the alarm system so that uh, it doesn't kick off as quickly or as often. One of the ways to do that is through self-massage or uh, release work with tent balls, uh, rolled up towel, softball, tennis ball, Choose what you like and what is meaningful to you. So I had some self-massage sessions during circuit breaker Mm. and I taught people how to help uh, release themselves uh, with with massage tools. Uh, Mm. Usually something that you can find at home quite easily. And how that works is you need to give your body time to adjust to the pressure and also the pressure needs to be something that's meaningful to you. What that means is if you've been to a massage before or if you've had someone, a family member, a friend, whoever, give you a massage, uh, you 
learn that there is a ah that feels so nice kind mm. of sensation, and that's the kind of sensation that you wish to have also through soft massage. So like that means that the touch is meaningful to you. It's not too light. It's not too painful. It's just nice where it feels like that is the right spot and that's the right amount of pressure and、mm. the right amount of input. Because sometimes it's not just pressure. It could be like a stretch. It could be skin pulling or something like that, and that might feel like the right thing、uh, for you. And that will lead to then a more comfortable state for your body. And you also need to give your body time. So normally that just right is a seven out of ten in terms of. Uh, pressure or discomfort that you feel is just like ah,、uh, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but it's like ah, like a nice uncomfortable.、Uh, <laughs> so you, what you want to do is wait for it to go down from seven to six, five, four, three, two, up to a, like a two or one, and then move on to another spot. So that、mm-hmm. is your system realizing that oh, actually we are very tense in that area, and we can actually calm that down.、Mm-hmm. And Then it ha- lets the 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 aches and pains go a little bit more, and it le-、uh, alleviates the tightness and alleviates the、um, reduced range of motion that you have as well.、Mm. Yeah, so that's how it works in a more detailed sense.、Uh, so yeah, so that yeah. Heard about dedicated practitioners of myofascial release for TMJ. TMJ over here. For singers in Australia, it includes having an external party putting their fingers through your mouth to stretch those muscles. Hey, <laughs> okay, just nice. Okay, <laughs> so、uh, Tingyun and I, when we were working together to、um, to do the Move Your Voice collaboration, we we exchanged sessions, and I gave Tingyun some rolfing sessions, and one of the rolfing sessions was had nose and mouth work, which means I stuck my fingers. In Singun's mouth and in Singun's nose. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I mean, my pinky finger and my nose. Not, not like it. It's like a really thick finger. But anyway, so、uh, yeah, Singun, you can talk more about your experience with mouth work and nose work, and how、okay. that affected your voice after that. Yeah, the the nose、yeah. work was very. Did we do the mouth or the? No, we did the nose work、oh, first. Yeah, we did the nose work first. No, 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 no. It wasn't the same. Okay, different thing. Yeah. So with the、yeah. nose, she she wears gloves, of course. And then I remember, thinking, <laughs> how is that pinky gonna fit into my nose? Like what? But it went in like this much, and it was a very strange sensation to feel the insides of my nose that way. And when she took out like the first finger, <laughs> I remember we were like, it sounds like I'm speaking with a microphone here, and then this is just muffled. So there was just、mm. something that happened in the nasal cavity that changed how my resonance was naturally happening, and it was very weird. It was just so weird, like. I, I I don't even know what was happening. Yeah. Um. But after she did the other nose and balanced it out, thankfully, um, I tried speaking and it just felt really open. And I think for me personally, it has always been very difficult to map the nasal pharyngeal area where like this part of your soft palate is. Um. As a singer, like we always talk about it in lessons, in choirs, in ensemble work. Like, oh, raise the fa-、uh, the the um soft palate. Sorry, I almost said pharynx. Raise the soft palate, see the face behind the eyes. <laughs> But I think this was the first time where I could genuinely feel what it's like to have sensations there and to have a sense of space there without having to be like, okay, I'm gonna raise this thing. So that was very interesting for me.、Um, another non-voice thing was that I had a facelift after that. It was so weird. After she did one nose, this side looked like I was smiling, and this part looked like I was like in neutral. But it looked almost like frowning in contrast. I think my eyes also depoofed.、Um, in general, the the whole area just depoofed and got lifted. It was very strange, super strange. And then what about the mouth work? The the mouth work and the the, the tongue work. <laughs> With the mouth work again. Gloves. Kes did like these. What do you call it? Traction. Yeah, this is just like very.、Uh, it's just soft tissue work and a little bit of traction along the、mm. gums and the inside of the the cheek. Mm, going along the gum line and then working up here as well because there's some jaw muscles on that front that you can access on the inside of the、mm. mouth up here, yeah.、Mm. And、that、then was, on the bottom as well, and then inside and、uh, inside of the gums and outside of the gums, yeah. This one was very、yeah. cool because after she did one side again when she took it out, I I felt like there was a lot more space to speak with, and I was very aware、um, 
of how my jaw was tracking to one side habitually um mm. something that I wasn't very aware of previously in my practice even when I work with a mirror um and then what else felt different i think my tongue felt very soft on one side after you did one side mm. <laughs> it, it like very, the base of your tongue especially yeah mm. um cuz i tend to hold like this part of my tongue quite um how to say like tightly it's a habit that i had in my teen Each year that I'm still trying to um, overcome, so that was very obvious that there was this clear like distinction between a release side and a not so release side. After she released the other side, it felt like it was a lot easier to articulate stuff. Again, a lot more resonance in the um, oral cavity over here, and the jaw just moved a lot easier. And with regard to the tracking of the jaw towards one side, then I felt a lot more centralized. Even when I bit. down it felt different yeah. and comfortable it didn't feel um it felt unfamiliar but it felt really really comfortable and it just felt like my tongue wouldn't have to like go backwards to make space for my teeth it usually feels that way um we mm. did try singing after that and i think just like the nasal pharyngeal like release that i felt it just felt a lot easier to vocalize and i think the laryngeal area just felt very free i think i did some musical yeah. theater stuff and i was like <gasps> It sounds yeah. like a dance, but I don't feel like I'm doing it at all. What's going on? And I remember that day you were saying that you weren't, you were feeling not very good, also mm-hmm. in your with your voice. Uh, it was a not so great voice day, as you like you said. And yeah. Um, and you di- you didn't even warm up. Yeah. The, like before our <laughs> session, which you did the the for some of the sessions, like you didn't even warm up, and you were very hesitant to try things, and then you did it, and you're like, what? How why I couldn't do this before and now I can do it, mm-hmm. but yeah, I guess it just brought more awareness and um, I guess in some ways brought back to neutral what some areas were like where some areas were more tense. Mm. Yeah, I think what's interesting yeah. is after those um sessions, even though I never felt it like so intensely, this relief and openness. But whenever I was aware that my jaw was tucking, I can remember. What the release felt like, and just kind of move while looking at myself in the mirror, and then it felt like my body could go like, okay, we can move this way. So that was very mm. interesting to me that even after one session, like the body remembers that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could open up more strategies and possibilities for what you can do in a more easeful mm. way because we mapped it into your body, and it was a more favorable strategy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so I think. Um, do we have any more questions? Did anybody say anything else? I mean, that Anyone wasn't really a question, but we just <laughs> just talk about mouth work. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, what might be your? Experience? Oh, someone asked, how long did these effects last? Did you have to repeatedly do nose and mouth work after? So I guess we partially mentioned that. Um, in terms of the immediate effects. I think <laughs> by the next day it just disappeared. But then when I recalled the sensations that we had during the session, it was something that I could maybe experience seventy percent of. I would say, yeah. Do mm. you think it continued after that? Hmm. But it wasn't that I woke up with that state. I had to kind of remind mm. myself, like, okay, this is possible, and then yeah, it can come yeah. back. Te- technically. Preferably after uh, a session like that, you you sing <laughs> mm. quite a bit. You practice after that uh, to to start to map that that position and that those movement strategies into your your uh, move movement vocabulary. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Even so, now, when I do classical singing, which requires a lot more of the nasal pharyngeal uh, space to be activated. I do feel mm. a huge difference because previously with my teachers, they always tried to help me feel that space, but I could never really get it. Now I actually am singing that way, and people have told me like my voice sounds different. It's brighter. It's more resonant. So cool. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all we have time for for today. Hmm. Do we have anything else? Anybody? Just me. This chat box is so small. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, what might be your experience or perspectives in seeking out myofascial therapists for TMJ tension? That's a really big question. Maybe we can save it for a future Q and A. Yeah, I mean, we did talk a little bit about it. Uh, 
TMJ tension. Mm. Yeah, it's a big it's a big question. I do help people with TMJ. Uh, mm. I'm I <laughs> I feel like we have to, I've talked about like what a myofascial therapist is, what myofascial is. Uh, what do they do? What does the, what does manual therapy do for TMJ? What do you have to do after that, preferably to <laughs> maintain uh, the what you have after the session, like comfort or um, yeah, just yeah, ease that you have after the session and so on. Yeah, so it's a big question. We'll talk about it another time. I think. Thank you very much mm. for the question, though. Um, yeah, but I think. From us sharing about the mouth work and nose work, you can get some idea on what you can get from seeking out someone who can do mouth work if you mm -hmm. have tension in your jaw. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Uh, we will probably be doing more of these, but for now, this is it. Uh, can you tell them about the workshop yes. and stuff? <laughs> conversation <laughs> between Kes and I where we explore how you can understand your body and voice in a more integrated manner to help you um, be able to use your voice in the way that you wish to and want to just like we've been talking about for this whole video if you're interested in coming for our workshop it's happening next Tuesday 15th February 10am to 1pm it's called Move Your Voice A Systematic Guide to Voice Practice you can find out more information in our link in the bio or in one of the posts down below um, in our feed somewhere. Uh, what mm. else do we need to tell them? Uh, registration ends this Saturday. So if you're interested, please sign up, especially if you signed up for our early bird code, um, which no longer is no longer available. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Please use it. Please use it. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and if you cannot make it for this workshop and you would prefer, you would ha you have a preferred time, you want to go for the workshop, but you're like, oh, this timing doesn't suit me, let us know. DM, mm. DM us uh, a time that you wish this workshop was at so that we mm. understand uh, preferred times. And we'll, we are thinking of holding a second workshop and we're trying to understand what timings work best for people. So let mm -hmm. us know. Yeah, okay. We have quite a few people say that, so. Yes, yeah. Okay, thank you everybody. See you around. Bye bye. bye. Oh, how do I stop this? Make, make cross. Bye. Will it save? <laughs> okay. Oh, please save. Okay.